ਕਰਤ ਸਈਅਤੇ ਬੁਲਦੇ ਆਦਮ Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to MTA USA Studios here broadcasting live from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh we have uh two wonderful guests here who have a w- decades and together probably over 100 years of experience in the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community USA. Uh we have Bilal Salam Saab and Abdul uh, Rakib Wali Saheb here as well. Assalamu alaikum brothers. Wa alaikum assalam. Now, this is the 68th annual Jalsa Salana for America. Do you remember the first Jalsa you attended here in America? Well, the, I know he was here before me, so I know he attended The first the first, uh, the first Jalsa I attended was in uh, Dayton, Ohio. Mm. Uh I became an Ahmadi in 1957. Uh at that time we had uh our conventions in different cities. We did not have it in one place. So uh I think my first one was maybe in Dayton, Ohio. What year was that? Uh Dayton, Ohio was 1959 or 1960. So we're about in our 10th year perhaps, 10th year of Jalsa then. Yeah. Right. What was that like? How many people was that? Uh atmosphere? well, most of the people were Afro-Americans. I think we had maybe two or three Pakistanis. Mm. Uh our Jalsa consisted of about uh we had about 150 to 200 people wow and most as i say were afro americans um because uh, at that time you know they had a it called it oriental um uh act where pakistanis were not allowed in the country oh wow okay yeah and bilal salam sir do you remember your first just the usa Yeah my my first just I c- I came into the movement in the 60s early 60s and my first just was in uh, 63 that was held in Cleveland Ohio okay and uh that was the first time I ever saw a, a convention of this caliber you know because it was it was amazing it was uh, spiritually uplifting it made me a little bit more confirm in my beliefs mm-hmm. and, and and what I was getting myself into and um it just carried me on you know in every step that i was taking in 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 doing this and going to these conventions you know it just uplifted me every year every year every year every year i get a new new foundation and i got my biggest foundation when i went to rabwa oh you know, tell us a little bit yeah, about rabwa well, well, rabwa was was the time when we went there the third khalifa was was uh, living at the time and um I went to Rabwa and I was on cloud 9 you know because I I saw this place and then when I saw the caliph it was just amazing you know because before we got there we used to always say well we're going to ask him this we're going to ask him that we're going to ask him this but when we all got in a room with him we couldn't open our mouths all we did was sit there look at him and cry you know because I saw that 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 light that he shared with everybody when he walks into a room you know and that's what really strengthen me more into understanding Islam and Ahmadiyya you know so those 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 conventions overseas was really uplifting to me yeah, i was i was with the first delegation to Pakistan and it was uh, uh 13 of us and uh, we were the first delegation from the US to go to Jalsa and Rabwa yeah Tell us a little bit about that. Well, again, uh, you know, it was the first time we you know, we have to remember we were not organized as we are now. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh we had no kadam, we had no uh, ijtema, <laughs> we had no mm-hmm. organization at all. I think we had uh, maybe about 3 missionaries in the entire country. You know, our budget was about $10,000 uh you know, across the country. You know, so we were uh we just organized among ourselves we had our own program we have our own objective and um uh it was totally different it was totally different uh so when we went to uh rabwa um uh, many of us was the first time we have ever seen the khalifa mm. or even heard his voice 
Many of our members, one of our members uh, became an Ahmadi in 1948. Okay. Imagine, he had never heard the Khalifa, never seen his, heard his voice since 1948. Mm. We went in 1973. <laughs> wow, that's, that's incredible. That's amazing. It was state. incredible. Wow. It was incredible to see the Khalifa to Masi. You know, we see people just lined up. And he was giving everybody a salam alaikum, a salam alaikum, and shaking everybody's hands. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you know, uh, at the Jalsa, there was no microphone. You know, so we had an interpreter. Uh, he would sit with us, and the Khalifa to Masih would talk for about 10 minutes. And uh, we asked, what, what did he say? <laughs> he said, oh, we're having a good Jalsa. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we said we're going to get rid of this interpreter, <laughs> right, translator rather. And so we had uh, our next uh, 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 translator was uh, Mulvi Wahab, Wahab Adam. He was just a new missionary at that time. And so he came in and he translated for us and he did a, a better job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Well, we, we had the same problem. Yeah. You know, but uh, Manawa Saeed was the, was the one that came and did translation for us. You know, and uh, uh, because he was, the one thing he was saying, which was amazing, when he was, when the Khalifa was talking, and he was explaining to the peoples in the audience, of, uh, and the non Ahmadis who was there, the police who was all over the place, and he's, he was telling them, you know, that uh, look at these peoples here. They come from all over the world. And we didn't know what he was saying, but Manawa Saeed was translating perfectly to us what he was saying. And he said, these, these are the peoples you can't destroy. You, you know, know I, so, I, so it was amazing when, it, when we were sitting there and listening to that. And I hear that voice every now and then uh, saying that because I, we was there in those, all those bad times. Yeah, I have something to say about the, the humor of our third Khalifa. Mm. <laughs> I remember, you know, we had one brother, he used to sit close to the Khalifa like this, you know, and Khalifa Tumasi III said, brother, I want to tell you one thing. <laughs> he said, you know, in our religion, it is against Islam to eat the flesh of your brother. <laughs> Everybody just cracked up because, you know, we, 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 we had a great opportunity to have a personal connection mm. with the Khalifa as we don't have now. So that's so much. You know, I really want to thank you for sharing that experience because yeah. my generation, we never knew the third Khalifa. Right. We, we grew up uh, with the fourth Khalifa and now we have a younger generation that's growing up with the, with fifth, the fifth Khalifa. Khalifa yeah. Right. Uh, so, you were able to have a connection with, I'm assuming, with all the Khulafa since the third Khalifa. What advice do you have for our generations now to keep that? The Khalifa to Masih, the third, may God bless him, said to me as I was looking at him, all I could see was his eyes and his lips. And he was holding my hand. And he said one thing. He said, I want to tell you one thing that I said to everybody that I meet. May God give you light. That was the last thing he said to me. Mm. And that was in 1973. I'm still here. <laughs> that was, that was, those meeting him was, was a really a, a, a amazing thing spiritually for me, you know. I was so much uh, into the Khalifa, you know, to that I, I just forgot where I was at, you know. And a couple of the brothers had to remind me, but when I found out where I was at was when I when we was getting ready to leave, and we went to uh, uh, we came in in Lahore, but we went to the, the capital. I think that was the capital of Pakistan, you know. And then I realized where I was at because that city looked just like New York. <laughs> Yeah. And I said, well, I'm back down to ground one again, you know, but, but it, was a, it was a wonderful experience. That's what really clinched me to, to really get close to the Khalifa. Listen to him. Gotta listen to him. Whatever he tells you to do, whether you like it or not, do it. You know, because he's directed by God. 
He doesn't tell us to do anything that's against our will, against, against the religion of Islam. So whatever he's telling you, you know, just, just do it. That's what to the, to the young people today, you know, always listen to your leaders and follow the instructions. Is there, <clears throat> uh, now we have, Bilal Saab, you're coming from Philadelphia. Yes. I understand that there's a new mosque uh, being built from the ground up. How's oh, that going? Bilal, Bilal. We, this, this is a prayer that I, uh, I've been saying for the longest because this is where Mufti came in at. That's right, 1920. He, 1920. And um, uh, we, I prayed to Allah to let us be the first to build a mosque in this city. You know, in all of these years I've been saying that prayer, you know, every Muslim in the city tried to build a mosque and they couldn't. Mm -hmm. But then uh, it came our turn. And uh, so we bought this land, you know, we, we didn't pay too much for the land. The land been sitting there for years, nobody wanted it, so we took the land. And uh, by the grace of God, we broke ground and this would be the first mosque in Philadelphia that built from the ground up. And right now we are 85% finished. Wow, so and we're looking at this year within the next year or so? We, 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 we was hoping this year, but I think it's gonna be next year when we when we finish the-, the So month. inshallah, though, this month inshallah. will be fully underway before the centenary hits. Yes, inshallah. Wow, inshallah. this is a, what a time to be alive. <laughs> what a time to and be I'm alive. And I'm just hoping I'm still alive to see it. Inshallah. Cause inshallah. I'm, uh, I'm following my brother's footsteps, you know, and I'm pushing him <laughs> uh -huh. and he's pushing me, so. <laughs> and it gives you a reason to continue right. to wanting to be alive. Right, right. It's right, very important. That's right. right. So, now, a lot of, um, uh, uh, oh, yesterday we spoke with Imam Shamshad Nasser uh, and also uh, Naima Mir Sahib, and we spoke about keeping the relationship with Hazur, you know, that's listening, listening to the khutbah, writing letters. Uh, what, have, what have you done as well throughout your lives uh, that have helped you secure a connection with Hazur? A relation with, with, with the Hazur, Khalifa. The Khalifa. Well, uh, you know, I like to say that, uh, you know, I have retired from the prison system after 23 years. He worked and, in, uh, he wasn't in prison. And I was a chaplain. <laughs> important, uh, important. I, I, I was uh, the only Ahmadi paid chaplain in the world. Wow. According to Movi Asif Hanif. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you were. And uh, what we used to do uh, every Friday, you know, our kutbah would be the kutbah of Khalifa to Masi. Okay. And um, so uh, what I did over the years, you know, we used to have uh, each inmate to sign the book, you know, that they had come to our meeting. And I had my clerk to count all of the names, you know, uh, in the book from 1991 when I began until last year, and we counted over 90,000 names. Mm. So we're talking about over 90,000 people, at least, maybe more or less, have heard about Ahmadiyya or heard about our community. Now, of these 90,000 people, I mean, a lot of people have an, a negative image of, of prisoners, of, of inmates, but sometimes there's people are victims of circumstance. What was your relationship with these prisoners like? What did you experience? Well, you see, um, uh, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed uh, said one thing in his book. You know, you have two kinds of people. You have those people who are righteous, and you have those people who are flexible. And uh, the second thing he said was, uh, you know, our holy book believe, begins with Aleph Lam Mim. I am Allah, the all-knowing. Mm. So Allah already knows. Number two, when I went to Khalifa to Masih the fourth, may God bless him, and asked for his prayers when I tried to get into the prison, uh, he said I would pray. This was in 1987. He said I would pray. He said, but i tell you one thing, you will not get many people. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> In 1991, I got my job. And after 23 years, I think out of 23 years, I got maybe 10 people to really, I, I, I got about 50 people to sign to buy it, but only 10 people are still active in the community, unfortunately. Okay. Mm. 
It well, is very difficult. Uh, the difficulty is that as a chaplain, I'm not able to continue my con uh, conversation with them. Mm -hmm. You understand? This uh, was the, the big problem. And so once they hit the, the street, you know, it was uh, finished. Ahmadiyya is not easy. Ahmadiyya is very difficult. It's not like Christianity. Christianity, you say, I believe Jesus died for me. That's it. You are 100% Christian. <laughs> but in Ahmadiyya, you have to live Ahmadiyya. And it's, uh, not, it's the Jihad bin Nas. Mm -hmm. It's that spirit within. And when God sees that spirit in you, and it's true, he guides you to the truth. Mm -hmm. This is the Ahmadiyya. So it takes time. You can't become an Ahmadiyya in a day, a month, or a week, or two years. You know, 50 years, I'm still struggling. <laughs> That's right. You know, Islam took 23 years to reveal. It wasn't an overnight thing. That's right. right. But my, my experience uh, in the prison, I started the prison system, prison uh, uh, ministry in Pennsylvania, going through the Pennsylvania uh, prison. I, at the first, they would never let uh, anybody in, especially Muslims, to, to do any, any kind of stuff. And the only way I got in, I had to get letters from the inmates. And some of the inmates in there had read our literature. Mm -hmm. And so they began to write letters and send letters out. And I took it to the uh, uh, commissioner of prison, which is in uh, Camp Hill in Pennsylvania. And, um, and I related to him that these people want us to, to come in and teach Islam. So he said, what is Islam? So I sat there and I talked to him for maybe about two and a half hours, explained to him what Islam was. And I, I gave him a, a copy of a Quran, which was a Quran. I had my own Quran, so I just gave that one to him. And uh, so he allowed me to go into the prisons. Just like this brother here, they, they, they wanted to make me a, 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 a prison chaplain. But I didn't want the job, you know, because uh, I found out that, that whatever they tell me to do, I have to do it, you know, and if it was against my religion, I had to do it. So I said, no. I said, just give me a stipend, just pay me a traveling thing, come up, and I come up. And that's where it went for me here in the state of Pennsylvania. And just like what he said, that the Cleveland explained to him that you won't get too many members, the same thing here in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Out of, uh, out of uh, 300 some people that I talked to in prisons here, I think it was about only three. Only one brother right now is still with us, you know, and that's Mahaman from, from, uh, from Harrisburg. He's still with us. I talked to him way back in the day when I first started going into prison. He stayed with us. Another brother who passed on, he, he stayed with us for a while, and then he was in and out, in and out. And every time they got sick, they would come and see us because they know they wanted to be buried, even though they wasn't <coughs> participating, but they wanted to be buried as an army. And like he said, it's, it's hard. You know, I've been here over 50 years. And so, you know, you, you have to go through these struggles if you want to get that blessings from God. And so this, this, is, this is part of my story. You know, <laughs> and these are excellent memories that you have shared with us, Jazaka Bilal Sahib and Abdul Rakib Sahib. Uh, we look forward to always hearing uh, your stories and sharing your memories with us so that we can carry them forward, inshallah, inshallah as well. Inshallah. Uh, this is uh, the MTI USA Studios. We're going to show you some new content at this point, and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Assalamu alaikum. Well,